Welcome to the another edition of Yorkshire Chris Weekly. On this week's episode... So, the weather last week was, it was pretty normal for the end of October, early November. But we did have that frost last Sunday night and in this episode we'll be looking at how that affected some of the plants in the garden. And we're expecting another frost here tonight. Some forecasts stay down to 2 degrees. On well, my own weather station forecast staying down to minus 2, so it could potentially be the coldest night of the season. So there'll be some plants I'll be definitely protecting tonight that I didn't last week. And one of those is just down here. So this is a tree fern. This is a Cyathea, which is not a hardy plant. But I'm just growing it here, hoping we get a very mild winter. And I'll basically just put some fleece just over the plant, like this, just draping it over, just to give it some protection from the frost. And just next door to this tree fern, you've got a ground fern here. Sorry, a ground palm. This is a hardy parlor palm. This is Camadoria radicalis, these really tropical looking leaves, but it's quite hardy down to about, let's just see minus five with no damage, it should take minus six, minus seven for short periods with no problem. So we'll just cover this up. And that's the protection they'll take for tonight. And the weather for the week ahead looks okay, so nothing, nothing too cold, nothing too warm. So there's no major rush to, to wrap up these Dixonia Antarctica tree ferns. We'll be doing that in a later video. But any tender plants have to be in now. The Antetes are all in. This is a banana plant. And, and it grows bananas, but this plant doesn't grow real bananas. Well, it's still a banana plant and it's got big leaves and it's 15 centimetres. Another plant. That is a cacti and it's really prickly. And if, if you put your finger on it, you'll be bleeding and you'd have to have cream and a plastic. Then it, it would hurt for a few days, but then it would have prickles, but it is to have a big cut on your hand. These are the purple plants, and they can grow in any country and if, if they're really bright, they're poisonous, so do not touch up. So the frost we had at last weekend has blackened off the foliage of this selenium. This is basically because temperature got down to 1.9 degrees air temperature, but the surface of these leaves exposed to the clear sky meant that they went down to obviously zero and caused this burning this frost damage and the colocasias next to those are mainly okay but a few of the leaves did get a bit a bit burnt as well but the colocasias will go on for a few more weeks if the frost remain away and to be fair this selenium just underneath look completely fresh green leaves and it's still flowering so they'll still go on for a little while longer and when I know a frost is likely I just throw some sheets over plants that I want to protect so in this case just over this rare because it's next to these arid plants I just threw these over the other night just to give them a bit of protection and the same here with the Cycas Revoluta got some fleece and a cushion just to put in the centre just to hold it down so the wind doesn't blow it off and that's worked well I think if we just take this off 
it's only a few seconds job and these leaves were dying back anyway but the centre is the bit you want to protect and we've still got the green leaves well the green is what they were before the frost so happy with that because those leaves are about three years old now just waiting for the flush next year still got flowering tahonias and salvias and I'm also very lucky because over here the ginger that we talked about as plant of the week last week is also still flowering which is good to see so a bit of damage but not much still got lots of nice colour in the garden You may remember a few weeks ago we took cuttings of the most tender plants that I grow and want to keep going each year and as you can see they're growing really well lots of new foliage lots of healthy growth and it's good to see that there are roots just coming out of the base of the pots already it's quite hard to see but there is a couple of fine roots on some of these so that was only about four weeks ago we did that so it shows that it does work at this time of year to take these softwood cuttings and these will produce nice plants and stock plants for next year's display now you may remember a few weeks ago I looked at my tetrapanax racks and showed the pups that were growing at the back of the garden well a bit earlier this summer I dug up some of the roots from that plant and just laid them here under my blue bamboo I just chucked a bit of old compost over the top of the roots and left them and as you can see they've sprouted lots of new plants and in spring I'll easily be able just to pull these up because they're very loosely rooted in here and have lots of extra plants which will be great to put around the garden and give away so root cuttings dead easy to do on this plant lots and lots of new plants now we often hear that tree ferns, the soft tree fern Dixoni Antarctica is very slow growing, you only get you know an inch a year at best, about two and a half centimetres but if you look at this one this got planted in 2014 and I had it since 2012 so it's five years of growth since I got it as a log. This is the point of when I got the plants and all this is a subsequent growth. So I bought this as a, a one foot plant a few inches in the ground and then you can see there this is four inches in the ground eight inches above ground. But the measure from the point there all the way up to the growth at the top you can see it's actually grown basically a foot so it's grown a foot in five years with most of that growth actually being in the last three years which has been planted out so they can grow pretty quickly as quick as some palms so you don't have to buy massive specimens as long as you have good moist soil for them to grow in they will grow in this case two just over two inches a year nearly three inches a year so that's excellent growth on this tree fern which is still looking nice and green with huge fronds that are over well over a meter long so excellent plants that you can buy small and still make a big impact in the garden and it'll be some time before I get this ready for winter because it's not cold enough yet to uh, deal with this plant but we'll be doing that in a future video. So the plants of the week this week is the Patsia japonica and related varieties. And this is the beautiful Patsia japonica moseri and the reason it's plant of the week is it's flowering at this time of year. It's related to the ivies and that's also flowering at this time of year and on this one you can see 
It's mainly just, just budding, the flowers are just about to open and when they do, it'll be covered in any late, late flying bees and wasps and butterflies. And over at this part of the garden, if we look up here, right up to the top, we can see all the flies and the bees and the wasps on that fat seed of flowers. And you can see just underneath, just here, these bronzy, bronzy flower buds, and that's a Fatsia polycarpa that will flower soon if the frost don't get it. So the Fatsias are great for really late flowering, really good for, for pollinating insects, and a bit of nectar sauce at this time of year for those. So that's why that's planted the week.